I'm doing this in the dark by candlelight. I I'm so glad I recorded that. That's awesome. It's a romantic <laughs> podcast tonight. Candlelit podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Dodgeball Podcast. In this episode, we will be recapping the events of the Elite North Region Round 3 tournament that took place the weekend of June 30th. Um, Here to help me do that once again is Eric Stone. And new to the panel will be Tony Stumpo and Kim Wilkie. Guys, thank you so much for for joining me. Um, And as I feel like I'm doing this all all the time, but sorry, I couldn't get to it sooner. But um, let's just go ahead and dive right in and see what you guys can remember. Um, We'll begin with you, Eric. If you can go ahead and just uh, bust out with an introduction name team you play for number all that good stuff sure uh thanks for having me uh eric stone captain tc bush nice and tony uh tony sumpo grand rapids kraken and apparently like the only team usa that people recognize that's the, real about team really. USA. <laughs> the, people's, the people's team the people's team <laughs> that's awesome and uh and kim uh, hi, I'm Kim, and I'm actually from the East Coast. I'm the captain of Precision. All righty. Well, I kind of just want to dive right in, and uh, we can start with you, Eric. And that is, um, what were the main differences uh, that you noticed from, from round two to round three? Uh, sure. Well, we this was the first time, I think this was the first time we've ever played at Grand Valley State University. Yep. Uh, so we usually North usually has a round in Grand Rapids every year, um, but this was the first time actually playing at, at Grand Valley State University, um, which is Dynasty's backyard basically, and where a lot of those guys won all their NCDA championships in the past. So they got like maybe like some kind of home field advantage, you think, or at least maybe psychologically being there, or. <laughs> Do you think that yeah, impacted anything? I, I would think so. I, that's kind of how that's kind of how we saw it going in. You know, like we're going onto their home court, so to speak. Gotcha. And so we actually tried to record this a couple of days ago, and um, unfortunately, weren't able to. And Rebecca had mentioned um, there was like was there like a leak that was taking place that, that did that impact the tournament at all, or do you kind of want to go into that a little bit? If that's worth mentioning. Uh, Sure. Yeah. So we had air conditioning going, uh, the air conditioning was going really well. Um, but it was, I think it was just, it was so hot outside. There was just so much moisture and condensation that was just dripping from all the pipes. And so you'd get these puddles kind of throughout the gym. Um, luckily there wasn't really, they weren't on the courts at all. Um, they didn't have to move a few courts around. I think one of the women's courts was, got pretty wet on one side so they had to kind of move that a little bit um but yeah we were kind of all jumping over over puddles all over the gym all day no one got hurt from that no accidental like slips or or falls um i saw a couple of tumbles i maybe you guys saw some falls or injuries i i didn't see any injuries or hear about any any injuries but I, I know during one match against Final Justice, their ball shagger took a really wicked spill oh, yeah, when she was running that. for a ball. Yikes. Well, no, nothing like, I almost want to say fatal, but like nothing substantial, like no broken limbs or, I mean, the guy walked away from that. I hope. Yeah, nobody died. Oh, that's good. I mean, that's kind of what I'm going <laughs> at, but good. Well, glad no one died. Um, Kim, did that impact you at all? From Like, actually, let me back up. Did you guys play... Um, open and women's at the same time or how'd that format work yeah um we played women's division and open at the same time and the leak heavily impacted the women's division it got to you guys <laughs> yeah gotcha. um the, we were playing on one court since it was just three teams and i mean pretty much once or twice a game we had to stop the game <laughs> and just get on our hands and knees and wipe off like one half of the court oh so like, but um, all the girls were very good natured about it and helpful, and no one cared that we had to stop the game. We just we didn't want an injury, so we took precautions. Gotcha. So just injury prevention took priority. Didn't bother you guys too much. Still had exactly. Fun. Very cool. Yeah, and definitely. then luckily we did move courts later in the tournament, and it was much better and easier. Gotcha. So it didn't like disrupt uh, bracket play, I guess, or no, not at all. Very cool. 
yeah, I definitely want to get into to women some more. Um, but before we do that, um, Tony, how about you? Did you notice any any major differences um, from round three to round two, or I guess moving past you know leakies le- uh, puddles and stuff like leakies? <laughs> I mean, the puddles were were pretty big. Um, I don't want to call them a highlight, but a, a really big focal point. Uh, it started right out of the gate, and where the women's court was initially located, I mean, by the end of the day, there was like standing water there. I mean, a guy had to come through the Zamboni again. We moved court five around. If you watch the pinch championship, uh, you can see that in between every point, like guys are on their hands and knees scrubbing the court. So um, uh, from a dodgeball standpoint, uh, I thought, you know, everything went really well. And, and most of the teams were at full strength and, uh, and they were just trying to finish strong. Gotcha. It wasn't, um, I wasn't too surprised when I saw like the standings. It almost seems kind of congruent with like uh, the previous uh, rounds. Um, so, like, would it be fair to say like it, the teams have, have they found the rhythm at this point? Um, er, pretty much, that there weren't any major upsets that you noticed or can speak to. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that especially in the playoffs. I think other than Rogue knocking Dynasty down into the loser's bracket a little earlier, um, you know, it kind of went as expected. Um, you know, our game against Boosh in the, the semifinals of the winner's bracket, like, came down to the absolute wire. Um, Boosh and Task Force played each other tough. The rest of the games were all really close in knockout, so. Gotcha. Um, did the Task Force do better this this round? Let me see if I can pull up the bracket real quick. They did do better than round two because the top two teams are the same. Kraken was third at round two, and I believe Task Force was maybe fifth at round two. So they they got back up into the top three into the money. Did they just seem more more fierce as opposed to round two that you can recall? You know, it was unfortunate. This is the first time at an elite tournament since I started playing that I did not get to play them in any division. Um, I know they had a keel from the East coast during open, uh, and he might've changed the dynamic of their team a little bit. I don't think anybody from the North was really prepared for him. That kind of showed in pinch too, I think. Nice. And this is a, a kill who? Antoine's his last name, I believe. Right. Kim. Yes. Yep. Okay. Akil Antoine. And yeah, I've only met him twice. I saw him at the East coast when I was there and then, then he showed up here in the North and yeah, kids, kids athletic. Nice. Let's just put it that way. And you said he's from the from the east. Yep. Very cool. Um, yeah. So, so Kim, are are you from the North Region? You already said you're from the East Coast. Uh, yeah, I'm actually from the East Coast. Um, my boyfriend Jeremy Meadows plays on TC Bush, so I traveled with him all year uh, to watch him and support him in the North. Okay. So, so Jeremy's he's East Coast too, then. Uh, technically, he lives on the East Coast, yes, gotcha. but his team is the North team. Okay. Okay, I finally figured out why I always thought T.C. Bush was East Coast. Um, <laughs> I could not figure out why it was. It was like, I, obviously Twin Cities, like they're definitely North, but for some reason I always thought, and it's because I've the only person, um, no offense, Eric, but that, that I recognized was, was Jeremy from you know 2014. I was like, oh, okay, East Coast. And I just could not shake that, but okay, finally, finally mystery solved go me <laughs> um cool well let's i guess we kind of already started going into open um so let's just go ahead and uh aside from the teams i already mentioned um eric what uh what teams stood out the most um that you noticed from from your perspective from round robin all the way up to to bracket play i would say task force and kraken played really well um i think just getting towards the end of the season and everything, you know, on the line in, in round three. I, I saw those two teams in particular really um, coming out ready to play. Uh, especially, I think Nico played really well for, for Task Force. And then uh, Kraken having Brendan in the lineup too was a big boost for them. Gotcha. Um, we, round robin, yeah, those were our only two losses in round robin. Uh, was Task Force and Kraken. So those were, I think, as far as, like, if you look at our season, just speaking about T.C. Boosh, 
this was our roughest round robin that we've had. We were pretty shaky in round robin, um, but we're able to turn it up once once elimination started. But yeah, we we dropped games to both Task Force and Kraken in round robin. Did you guys? Um, you said you're shaky. Was it like mentally shaky, or you just kind of had like a rough start in round robin before you found your rhythm? Um, how would I describe it? Well, we had been top seed and undefeated. I, I think we were undefeated in, in round robin for rounds one and two. And so it, maybe it's just, you know, in my head a little bit that, okay, we weren't, you know, perfect or didn't, you know, come out with the top seed that it was a little bit shaky. I, I mean, I still think we played, we played really well, but I particularly recall just in those matches versus Task Force and Kraken that we were just getting really throw happy and giving up all of our balls and just playing pretty wild. Um, but I think we were able to just huddle up after that and just look at the positives from it. And I think it helped us get back on track. Did you recall what you guys did to, to get back on track? Like. I won't say like motivational speeches, but because um, you know you can <laughs> well, you can derail and go the complete opposite direction. My girlfriend so. Dua is our team manager, and uh, she. I remember going into the huddle after because we lost the task force, then we lost the kraken, and we're in the huddle, and and she usually just manages us basically and tells us where to go and what we need to be doing, and she was just pissed. And it was just, she said something like, I don't know what you guys are doing, but you guys need to figure your shit out or something like that. And I was like, yep, yeah, we do. We were not playing our brand of dodgeball those last two matches. So her saying, uh, figure your stuff out, that that clicked? Or was that just kind of like a, almost like a, a come to Jesus moment? Like, okay, yeah, we need to get, get ourselves yeah, together. Think, and- I think we all, we all knew that we got out of our style a, a little bit and we're rushing it a little bit too much and we needed to just get back to our basics and um to get us back on track gotcha. but I, that was kind of the yeah that was the moment i guess was was her just coming into the huddle chewing us out a little bit i mean sometimes that's what you need i guess uh getting yelled at can really change uh change your mentality sometimes at least from my perspective being in the army like oh wow we just <laughs> yeah. got just got lit the f up um we're good <clears throat> um going back to to task force and and kind of like their improvement did you did, did they seem different to you or was it was it you, you mentioned it was a kill that might have um helped give them that edge or did they feel like a different team when you played them this time around i thought nico played really well i i i would he is a player that really stuck out uh, stuck out to me just thinking about task force in this round, I just thought he played extremely well round three. Nico Nodell. Uh, Nico Nodell. Yep. Gotcha. I'm kind of cross-referencing the, uh, the recap from the Tribune a little bit, trying to see if I can pluck some names. Um, any other teams that, that you noticed, um, that had a good showing other than task force, um, not to spend the whole time on them. Oh, I just mentioned Kraken, Kraken. Uh, having Brendan out there. Uh, they played really well. They, I mean, they looked like they were, they were really hungry for it. They still had, um, you know, they were up there in the points too, and and were looking to finish, finish strong. And I mean, you could tell they were they were playing hard and and going for it. Gotcha. And um, any players that you noticed that that stood out? Just uh, again, like the whole way through. Um, aside from uh, Nico, uh, Nico Brendan on Kraken. This is Brendan Mizel. Yeah, Mizo. Yep. He was out for one of the rounds too, wasn't he, Tony? Yeah, he was actually. He got back from uh, study abroad in South Africa the day after. Um, the day after round two. Okay. Brandon My Brandon Meisel. Okay. And he what team is he on? Kraken. Kraken. Gotcha. Cool. Definitely uh delve into Kraken some more uh with Tony. Um 
And I guess we can we can start with you, Tony. What, what teams did you notice um, aside from the ones that were mentioned um, from your perspective? So I didn't get to see a ton of them, but I I got to watch them kind of finish up a little bit. Uh, Kaiju to me. Um, it makes me, you know, I've been waiting for two years for them to kind of put it together. Um, Devin's added pieces every year, um, has shuffled things around, and I always think they're on the cusp. And last year it didn't happen, and at round one it really didn't happen. And then two consecutive fourth-place finishes, I think they've kind of finally arrived. Um, and so just based on their finish, and, and if you ask a lot of players, I think they'll probably tell you, Nobody from Kaiju like really took over or stood out. It was like always just six guys working together to get it done two tournaments in a row. Um, so I think as a team, like maybe not a jump from rounds two to three, but from one to two and then carrying it over. Um, definitely, definitely Kaiju. Gotcha. Um, and this is Devin McManus's team. Yes. Gotcha. So you were saying that they, they just had more cohesion uh, this round possibly. That's what yeah, I think so. I think so, for sure. Gotcha. Um, are, are you friends with them, or any reason why you're particularly looking at them? To- um, yeah, I'm I'm friends with those guys. I did play with them in Vegas a couple years ago, back when they were still uh, the core was still super best friends. Um, so I definitely you know respect those guys. I like playing against them. Um, we always have fun when we match up with them, uh, and I was just happy to to see those guys put it together for two tournaments in a row. Gotcha. Um, so obviously, I mean, you were you were here, but, but like Eric was kind of mentioning, cracking a little bit in terms of teams that seemed most improved and stood out. What did you guys do differently this round? Uh, was it like some of the roster ads or um, having different players? Or I think, that, well, this was the first tournament that we had all seven players that we wanted to begin and begin and end the season with. This was our full, complete roster. Um, and we kind of had a different different structure this year than we've had in years past. Um, and, you know, we brought in Jake Devine, who I tried to be low-key in some of my in my preseason stuff with him, not to give away our, our secret, but, you know, I expected him to be a uh, Rookie of the Year candidate, and he got injured at round one and then again at round two, and he finally made it through through a full tournament healthy. Um, so this was our, our full team, and this is what we envisioned it being. And I think we just kind of found a team structure, like everybody has their role and we know what that is now. Uh, we found a structure that works for us and a pace that works for us. And it, it showed in round Robin. Um, and I mean, you know, the, the ultimate finish, I thought we, you know, we deserved a little better than what we got, but, um, you know, we ran up against Bush and then dynasty back to back. And I mean, we were, you know, a play away in both of those games. And, and so we were right there all tournament. Gotcha. So it wasn't like you guys got shut down. It was you, you had a pretty good run um, against obviously the the top two teams. So you found your rhythm. Yep. And will you will you have not to jinx you, but will you have your full team uh, for nationals? Uh, yes. Yep. We're all planning on being there. So hopefully we're gonna make some noise. Awesome. And was forgive me if I don't know any better. Are you guys were you guys mostly like a, a pinch team? Uh, yeah, Kraken has always been a, uh, I'd rather not talk about pinch uh, this time (laughs) if you look at the pinch bracket, but, um, yeah, Kraken's always, always been known as a pinch team as well. Even going back to the, the bear Jordan days. Bear Jordan. Gotcha. I've heard that before. Um, the, the core of Kraken is, is bear Jordan, um, is like the core of bear Jordan. So going back even to 2013, um, always been a pinch team as well. Gotcha. So it was the transition from pinch to to rubber, to, I guess non pinch eight point five. Was that was that difficult for you guys, or did you guys kind of just pick it up now? Um, so I didn't join Kraken until two thousand sixteen. Um, they they adopted pretty well right away. Um, it took me, I'll say, just personally, my learning curve. Like I learned how to pinch a ball and throw that effectively well before open. It took me a, a few years. Um, to get that, but Kraken, Bear Jordan, they've always been a contender. It wasn't until uh, 2016 that we really, you know, broke through and uh, and won a couple of medals and and got one in open. So, gotcha. Um, and and Kim, real quick uh, before I move on to um, like 
unmentioned MVPs. Were you able to watch any of Open at all, or were you just was women's taking place the entire time? So uh, women's took place during pretty much all of the round robin portion of Open. So I did get to see all of the bracket play. Um, so I saw like, a good a good many games. Yeah. Were there any um, any teams that you noticed or uh, players that we might not have covered, just from from your perspective? Um, I think we covered pretty much everyone that I had written notes down about. Um, mentioning Achille Antoine coming from the East and playing with Task Force, and I think that tripped up a lot of people because it kind of changed Task Force's game. Um, and I also noticed that um, Mark Trapetti had some really good throws, like really fast looking, and uh, some good catches as well. But other than that, didn't see a whole lot except Boosh games. Gotcha. A little bias, maybe. With, with just Boosh. a little. <laughs> just a little. For sure. Um, something came up here that I wanted to ask about. I might have to look at it again. But um, <clears throat> I uh, I finally got to watch um, Eric's four, uh, 5v1 against Dynasty. Uh, good God, man. What what was what happened there? Oh, man. That was, <laughs> that was a pretty big moment. Uh, I felt pretty good about that. Did you? Uh, uh, did you? Man, I I don't know where to, where yeah, to can, start with. Can you I, I remember, you know, I remember when I was the last one in, and I remember working on that left side, and they just had one ball. I was able to make a good dodge, and I, you know, had I think five balls, and they just had one, and that was pretty much the start of it, where I was able to. They, they let me get some space and kind of get up to the line and get a throw. And then I was able, I think, to get Trevor out right away. I, I kind of faked like I was throwing at Bailey, who was right in front of me. And then I just kind of no-looked it, you know, over towards the middle where Trevor was. And that was that was the start of it. Were you just gassed after that? Or was that just like another day for you? Or, I mean, because that um, was... I, I was pretty gassed. Yeah, it, I wasn't, I mean... The elite court is so small, and I'm and I'm used to pay, playing on on a pretty big court playing foam, so a sixty foot court. So I'm used to kind of going back and forth a little bit, you know, longer distance. But um, no, I, I was I was definitely pretty gassed after that, and um, wanted to take a rest, but needed to stay in, so so stayed in. Gotcha. Yeah, I was watching that. It was uh... That was incredible. And then also, do you, um, were those like normal commentators? Was, is that a normal thing uh, for you guys? This can go to anybody. That was Tony, that was Tony oh, on the yeah, commentary. I, was, oh, I that can't was you? help but, but talk when I'm streaming. Like, I, I do a bunch of commentary for NCDA stuff too. I couldn't help. I, I didn't want the viewers to be bored. I mean, the action was good enough. I just wanted them to know a little bit more of what was going on. Yeah, I know that was. Away misinformation left and right. That was great. Um, and I, and so I, I want to ask because I remember like I've been familiar with with NCDA since like 2005 or six, and one of the things that impressed me the absolute most was that they actually you guys have commentators uh, for these games that that will take quite some time, and they'll even show up on, on like uh, Fox Sports Network and whatnot. So you said that you've commentated in the past. Are you, are you part of that team then, or um, nothing like official? Um, it's usually Kevin Bailey tries to um, do a lot of different production things. I'll give him some credit. He's definitely trying to trying to raise that, the production value up. Right. Um, so like this year's MDC, uh, there was another tournament at Michigan State. We did some commentary together. We even, you know, got together and did a pre-show uh, with another couple guys and did interviews. So I don't know. It's just, it's really fun. And then, you know, when the, the camera was in my hand, I was like, oh, I'm not just going to, sit here and be quiet. I'm going to let the fans know what's going on. So yeah, that was, I, I enjoy it. That was great. Um, you spoiled me. Like I, I expect that from now on now for, for everything, everything <laughs> should be commentated at least some point. You, I don't know. You just added like a new de- um, element to it. And um, I don't know why, but I lost it when you said uh, Dylan taking uh extraordinarily long time to, to get out or he said something like that. And it was just, I don't know for some reason it was, was hysterical. I don't think I knew he was about to go out. Is it that like I, you know, I was trying to make sure I was, I wanted to watch the game, but I wanted to make sure the screen was where it needed to be. So I was watching the game on the screen while the action was like right in front of me. And 
he got hit or whatever, but I'm watching the screen and I couldn't tell it cleanly. And he kind of like took a few casual steps up like he was still on and then just kind of walked off. Yeah. And so I was just kind of like, oh, all right, Dylan with a really delayed out there. there we go. <laughs> and, no, I just, it was like, it was just such a casual observation in the moment. Yeah, it was. I mean, I think well, I, I guess I can just speak for myself. Like I was thinking the same thing. I was like, I thought he got hit. What's he, what's he doing? Maybe he doesn't know. And then for some reason, I just, I just lost it with your comment. And then it was followed up with uh, something like, and Eric doing really well. Uh, he's pushing 37 or something like that. And so Eric, he's 36 years 36. old. Right. Like my, my tone, my everything went up. Yeah, I got amped. Are you really 36, Eric? 36, man. Yeah. Holy crap. Wow. Good. I thought you were like, I had that fact right. Yeah, I thought you were like mid 20s or something. That was, um, that gives me hope. Um, yeah. I'll be 36 30. going on 27. Nice. Yeah, dodgeball keeps you young. I'll be uh, I'll be 35 in one week, so I'm not too far behind you. But uh, very cool. Um, were there any other players? Um, this can go to all three of you guys that might not have been mentioned. I mean, there's some some names that are popping up in this article, but unfortunately, I don't know them too much. I have heard of Miles Gardner quite a few times already, um, and he's on Kaiju. You yeah, guys happen, he happen to see what he's he did. Tricky to play against. Um, he does some some interesting stuff on the court, and it's like when you hear of a baseball pitcher and they say like he's effectively wild. That's Miles on the dodgeball court. Effectively wild. Sure, like he's he really tough to hit. Stuff. He's very difficult player to hit out. So is he just like, hey, one ball might be eleven feet in the air, one ball might be like straight to your shin, or just you you don't know what we're gonna get with him? Yes. Gotcha. Very cool. Um, you guys mentioned to kill. Uh, did mention that Colin O'Brien might have been the day's MVP. <clears throat> Can any of you guys speak to that a little bit, or just kind of speak to his day, or if if he stood out to you guys? Um, I mean, if you look in that right up, like if it wasn't for Colin, uh, Dynasty's not in that championship game to begin with. Um, he single handedly beat Kraken if you ask me in points two and three, basically uh, he did it. And if you want to look at an overall tournament MVP, like he did it in pinch as well. I mean, not cracking alone. I'm just saying like he did really, really well in pinch. And prior to Eric's five on one comeback, Colin had like four of the five kills to set that to, to make it. So Eric was alone to begin with. Wow. So it was really like it got down to the, clearly the two best players were left on the court for that point which made it all the more exciting. Awesome. Very cool. And then um, I noticed um, DeMonte Cleveland being mentioned again, um, as with Derek Johnson. I know Derek, Derek is uh, known for catching, but I'm not surprised to see DeMonte mentioned at, at all. Like, I think that guy's a, got a huge bright future ahead of him. Um, Anyone else that might have been overlooked? Um, and this can go to you too, Kim, in case you might have picked up on somebody that we might not have covered. Uh, no, I think everything's been covered that I saw. Awesome. Very cool. Well, let's go ahead and get into uh, to women's. Um, and I'm, I'm going to assume Eric and, and uh, Tony, you guys didn't really see any of this because of Open. Unfortunately, I, I did not. Yeah, I, I didn't see much of it. I, I was able to see a couple, a couple of games, but wasn't able to follow it very closely. Gotcha. Well, Kim, no pressure, but tell me everything. Um, <laughs> what do you want to know? Well, first of all, this, so this is the first official women's division that, that took place? Yes. And were these teams of, of six? Uh, these were actually supposed to be teams of five, and then we had a lot of girls who had to drop out due to like injuries and life events going on. So uh, the week of, we decided to make it a 4v4 format. Gotcha. Okay. And... Uh, so you play for the the Riveters with Paige? Yes. Yeah. Um, what I did for this was I basically voluntold four different women. Um, it was going to be four teams at first. Um, I voluntold them all that you guys are going to be captains. You just need to find three other women. Go. And then we just put teams together that way. And then as people dropped out, we had to kind of uh, figure things out very quickly and just combine teams just so we had enough people to play. Gotcha. Was was that difficult at all? Um, rallying them together and and, and um, assigning them, you know, captain slots and and saying go go get women players, or or was the North ready for it? 
Um, it was a little difficult just because um, a lot of women who really were interested in playing, um, they just didn't really have the information and, you know, I don't think they know each other as well up there. Not all of them, but some of the newer ones especially. Um, so it was a little difficult, but I mean, we have a nice Facebook group going and, you know, we just kept each other up to date on, you know, who's joining which team. And if someone needs a team, I just assign them to a team and just made it very clear cut of how things were going to roll. Gotcha. And were there any hangups doing that or was everybody pretty much like for the most part, good to play along and, and accept their, their team roster or. Uh, yeah, everyone was uh, super great about everything. No one cared if they needed a team, they didn't care who I put them with. They were just excited to play. So it was really great. Everyone had great attitudes. Awesome. And uh, if you don't mind me asking, how did you come to put this together being from the East and all? Honestly, I don't really know. Um, <laughs> back before round one, Kate Kearns and I had talked to Glenn and she's also an East coast player for KO. Um, and he's just like, you know what? If you guys can get this going, go for it. I would love that. We need a women's division in the North. And uh, we tried really hard for Zanesville, Ohio to have a women's division. Um, I actually reached out to every single NCDA team captain and found every single woman that plays in the NCDA out in like the North region. And uh, we made a Facebook group, got all these women signed up. And it was looking really good because I bet there's at least 20 NCDA women that live in Ohio, but no one wanted to travel and we just couldn't get it going in time. Gotcha. Well, maybe, um, so with, with this being accomplished, it might make it easier for, for future elites, uh, for next year, for round one, now that it's actually been a thing, so to speak. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. Do you, um, how, how'd it go overall? I mean, we kind of already talked about the issue with the, uh, the, the leaks, but, um, like overall, um, what was it like? Overall, it went um, extremely smooth. Um, since we only had three teams, uh, Glenn and Tony basically were just like, you know what, do whatever you want. We have it set up for seven rounds of round robin. If you get that many in, great. If not, and you want to cut it short, you know that's fine as well. Just be done by this time and start the bracket. So we did six rounds of round robin. And um, no one seemed to mind. And, you know, the competition was great. There wasn't any one team that was just, you know, beating up on another team all day or losing constantly. It was stiff competition the whole way through. So it was a lot of fun. Gotcha. So the teams were well-balanced. Um, there wasn't like a super stacked team just mowing everybody down the entire Yeah, time. very well-balanced. Um, I believe it was The Flash, uh, which was led by Lauren Dwyer, um, I think they had the hardest time just syncing up, but as soon as their like chemistry clicked, I mean, they were catching everything. Uh, Claire Curry, another Canadian from uh, the flash was just lighting people up with her hard throws. Um, so they were really scary once all the chemistry came together for them. Yeah. Like how she's um, mentioned as Canadian Claire Curry. That's, I don't know why it's just triple C for for no reason. Uh, what uh, what yeah, balls did you guys? Team, shout out. What's up? <laughs> my old team in 2015 was triple C. Oh, nice. Yeah. What what was triple C? You'd have to ask Tyler Underwood. It's a church, I believe. Gotcha. He was our captain. Gotcha. That, that's that's funny because there's a train. There was a team called Triple A, All American Apostles. So I wonder what triple C would be. Christ Catholic Church, I think, I was honestly. I just going like to say that. that. I don't Man, know. It's freaky. Get out of my head, dude. Um, <laughs> literally going to say that. Um, but real quick, Kim, what, what, what balls did you guys use uh, for four wins? Uh, we used the no sting balls. No sting. Gotcha. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I guess, uh, so with the North, if, if you're not if you're not playing open or pinch, they're really, because there, is there co-ed? No, no co-ed. So this is like the, the first like, I don't want to say like the first women's opportunity to play because you have people like Rebecca that will play open and pinch as well as Paige. So do you think this will eventually spur into co-ed or is that too soon to say? I would, I would hope it does, but um, coming from the East, I know it's really difficult 
um, to play four divisions in a day. So what we've done in the East is we have women's and open at the same time. And then we do co-ed because we have so many co-ed teams. And this year we started adding a second day for just pinch. Gotcha. So honestly, I kind of feel like um, if we want to get co-ed in the North, it's going to have to be a two day event kind of like we're doing. Gotcha. Very cool. Well, going back to uh, some of the, the players that stood out, um, aside from Claire and Lauren, um, did you notice anybody else or like, who else? Um, I would say from the Riveters, to? Ashley Guevara, uh, Guevara. I'm hoping I'm saying her name right. Um, she stood out big time. I would say she was the day's MVP for women's. Um, I, I kept joking with her because she would be left in by herself like in a three versus one situation numerous times and she would just close out the game and just pick people off one by one. It was amazing to watch. And she's on Venom in the East Coast, right? Correct. Yeah, she's another East Coast girl that traveled out. Gotcha. So, so you've, you've played against her as Precision in previous uh, divisions or at least previous regions? Yep, many times. Gotcha. Was it, was it I don't want to say it was satisfying, but was it cool watching that happen? Like watching another fellow like East coaster playing and, and, and doing really well or. Just, oh, like, oh yeah, definitely. But she does really well in the East too. So I kind of expected nothing less of her. Gotcha. She's a great player all around. Very cool. Yeah. I'm, I've said this a few times. Um, I, I remember seeing her play, um, way back in the day, like 2009, 10, when she lived in Phoenix. So she's always, um, one of those tough females that, um, just fearless. It was, it was fun watching her play. Um, and cool that she's, you know, continued. Um, on the Tribune, there's, uh, for the Golden Girls, Sam, going to butcher her name. Sac I, I think it's Sakarichia. Sakarichia. Maybe. I'm sorry, Sam. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Did you notice uh, which, which, why she might have gotten a sent, uh, shout out or? Um, so she, she was playing amazing early on. Um, it was one of her first times playing with the no sting balls. And I, I believe she is now a fan because she can whale those balls. Nice. <laughs> and um, it was unfortunate because Golden Girls, I think, were undefeated in round robin up until we took a break and moved the court to a dry court. Um, and at that time, she played a game of open and hurt her back really bad. And... Um, it was actually kind of detrimental for the Golden Girls because you could see on my score sheet that's when they started losing games. <laughs> but um, she is one tough lady and just kept playing all day long, both women's open and pinch, and did not complain at all. She is a trooper. Wow. So she, uh, when you guys moved to a dry court, that's when that happened? or Yeah, so we, we took like a 15-20 minute break because... You know, we were just flying through the round robin with only three teams. Uh, so during that time, she just went and played with her open team. Um, oh, shoot. What are their names? The Hasbins? Yeah. And um, she came back after a game or two, and she's like, Kim, my, I hurt my back. I was like, oh, no. But she still played. Wow. I, yeah. I mean, it's kind of ironic because you think if you're going to do it, it's going to be – with all the puddles and whatnot, but um, yeah, hopefully it wasn't too too serious. Um, and once again, like the Golden Girls were in it, still winning games all day. Um, Alicia Ellis, who traveled up from Dallas, and um, Stephanie Moy were pretty much just you know keeping them going right along, even with a hurt player. So nice. Is, is Stephanie Moy also from the South? She's from the North. She's from the North. Gotcha. Yes. Um, were there any other South players? I meant to ask that earlier for Open 2, but I can go back to that one. But for the for the women's, anybody else from any other regions uh, that came out? Um, no, I believe it was just um, me and Ashley from the East and Alicia from the South. I think that was it from other regions. Gotcha. Very cool. Um, and as far as these, these teams, uh, again, it might be too soon to tell, but do you think they're going to stick around or is this like a temporary thing? We're going we're gonna to come back with different team names and, and brand and, and all that other stuff for next year. Yeah, I think that, um, I think the North women seeing that, you know, this is going to happen. It's going to be established are going to start forming 
like teams that they're going to try and stick with all year long and, you know, maybe make like a little bit of a legacy team out of it, so to say. Um, Cause a lot of girls from the North weren't there. Um, you have all the Minnesota girls. None of them were able to make it to this round. So uh, I actually see teams kind of forming and becoming more, um, Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Static. You, you or, know, staying in place. Right. Yeah, very cool. I mean, it, it was cool watching, um, like, the South start off with round one with, I think I think they had four. They started with four, then they moved to five, and then um, I think they moved to rubber. I might have to backtrack and find out. But it just, it was continuous, and you can tell that there's going to be um, some players going to come back next year, and it's... Uh, Again, we're very, very biased towards the West Coast, but we're, we're, we're pretty spoiled. Like, we have no uh, no lack of, of divisions and, and, and women players. So it's awesome seeing that that's going to happen, hopefully, with the North and South as well. Um, is it fair to say that there's a pretty good women showing in the East? Yeah, definitely. So um, the two. We have the luxury of having co-ed. So, you know, all 18 to 20 co-ed teams need two girls. So... You know, right there's 40 women right off the bat who are usually down to play women's division. I see. I was struggling with that math for some reason. Like, that's like at least three teams, but very cool. Um, I guess before I move on, was there anything else that might have stood out from from that? It looks like um, the Riveters pretty much took it the whole way. Was that Rebecca's team? Do you know? Uh, yeah, so um, okay, Paige yeah. was the captain of that team, and Rebecca also played in one game on it. Um, she was very busy because Final Justice only had six players for open. Um, so her and Paige were doing their best to run back and forth. Um, but awesome. Paige or um, Rebecca did not have the luxury of being able to do that near as much. Gotcha. So she got there, <laughs> won a game, got the medal, and she's good to go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But the game that she came and played, she was a tremendous help. So <laughs> awesome! That's very cool. I'm looking at the picture right now, and I can see the actual Rosie the Riveter, the Riveter there. So I can see where they got the inspiration. Um, yeah, we all had matching shirts, and somehow all of them disappeared except mine. <laughs> huh? I wonder what happened there. I mean, Not actually, sure. yeah, I mean, so, I mean, the West Coast, they'll happen all the time. Like, they'll have a team that has all the same jerseys, but then all of a sudden they just, like, people are playing in, like, tanks and, and different shirts. Like, what, what happened? Like, how did you guys just fall apart during this time? <laughs> Y'all looked really good at, at the start, but... Uh, people get sweaty, man. <laughs> deal with it. <laughs> Look like a team, dang it. That's one of my biggest pet peeves. Actually, uh, I have like four backup jerseys because I always want to represent my team and sponsors and whatnot. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so it was, you said, because I talked about AC earlier and, and like the leaking, and I meant to ask this earlier, so that's why I'm kind of like stumbling over my words, but uh, was is it unseasonably hot out there for you guys or, or is this like summertime weather? Was that natural or did the heat get to you or what was that like? I think at round two and three in particular, you know, I mean, summer, it gets in the 90s, uh, and it just so happened the weekend around Chicago, it was, it was 95 degrees, and then the weekend around three here in Grand Rapids, it was 95 degrees, and um, Chicago, I, it was pretty pretty miserable and stuffy in that gym, so. And that's normal summertime weather for you guys? Yeah, especially, I mean, we have that, I mean, we have real bad humidity here. Uh, so you even get the dry heat like we do. Yeah, I think that's maybe part of the difference. Um, so we just tried to cope with it with the AC. I mean, leading up to the event, we were getting a lot of questions as to whether or not the facility had AC and if it would be on. And it turned into kind of like a careful what you wish for type thing because yeah. then we had to deal with leaky floor. Yeah. Well, the floor wasn't leaking, but a wet floor because of the leaks. Yeah, we had that problem in San Diego. Uh, the gym didn't have AC and it was already humid from last year, but... I'm just gonna say it. I'm I, I'm used to like the South, like actual humidity, because there for <laughs> uh, for the summertime. And it's like, oh, this is this is nothing. Um, but yeah, it just seems like since round two, heat's been a factor um, for everyone. And maybe it's because I'm talking to people from different regions, but it, it seems new to me. But I guess I can maybe I'll get corrected on that. Did the uh, the heat impact you at all, Eric? 
Um, let's see. I, I guess I've just gotten used to it over the years of just playing in different environments. I mean, I think with rubber, you've got your fingers taped up typically. So I think it can become a problem if you're playing foam where you don't have your fingers taped up. And if your fingers just basically, or your hands just, you know, soaking wet from sweat, you just can't really grip the ball at all. Um, but with 8.5, we've got our fingers taped up, so we're able to keep a pretty good grip on the ball. And right. so it doesn't really have an impact in that way. But I, th I thought the facility was really nice. Uh, Grand Valley State University is really nice and, um, you know, cool location. But, yeah, just unfortunately we just had the, the water dripping. But That's otherwise right. it was a cool place to have around. Uh, nice venue. For sure. And how about you, Cam? Did the heat impact you guys or did it impact you at all? Um, for women's, no, since it was air conditioned. But I will agree with what Tony and Eric said about um, round two was just awful as far as that gym having zero airflow. Thanks. Yeah, I think uh, I've already kind of had it in my head to plan strategically if we go back to Grand Valley the time of year. The last three years, we've had round one in Grand Rapids. And if we go back there, I'd like to try to do round one in Grand Rapids so that it's in April and we don't have to run the AC. Oh, sure. And then, you know, that, that takes care of two problems right there. It won't be hot, you know, unless, like, we get some unseasonably hot day and then we don't have to worry about, you know, all the condensation. In April. Yeah, because I, I do like that venue a lot better than the YMCA that we've um, played at historically in Grand Rapids. Yeah. And we didn't have any problem running, uh, running six courts. And if we wanted to, um, I think we can run more next time if we had to. Oh yeah. There's space there for more courts for sure. Yeah. Real quick. So how many teams were there per, per division? There's 15 pinch, three women's and 15 open. Maybe, is that so, so 17 pinch last time? Did the venue location impact teams that, that didn't make it? I think we it slightly, because I think there was like an extra team that uh, came out from Chicago that played played pinch um, at round round two that wasn't there. And with uh, with round one being close to the East Coast, you kind of had a so an East Coast team come out and play. So uh, being up here in Michigan, I think you know we basically just had North only for pinch and open. Gotcha. Yeah, my geography is terrible. I, because like when we were talking about like when we're gonna meet up and, and time zone, I was like, no, I'm pretty sure I said CST, and I was like, oh well, people can live in different areas, Steve. It's it's not all one <laughs> clump of of north and east, but um, I think that's all I had for for both open and women's. Although actually, I did remember were, were there any South male players that participated in open that you guys can recall. Not that I recall. Mm. I mean, technically, with Jalen, uh, he flies up to play with. Di I mean, he started in the North, uh, but lives in Texas now. But I wouldn't. I'd consider him a North player for sure. Still. Gotcha. Boy, I thought that. I thought there was. I thought I noticed somebody from the South going up there, but I might have to double back and review my notes. But um, well, very cool. Um, all right, so um, let's go ahead and just move into pinch and. Um, I kind of want to start with the same question uh, with you, Eric, and that was, uh, was there any major differences that you notice uh, with the pinch teams and, and pinch overall? And that could be in terms of, like, players, teams, performances, et cetera. Well, I think it was, um, you know, pretty typical with, I think, Dynasty and Notorious uh, uh, being at the top. A um, little unusual to have Kraken drop out earlier. Uh, and then TC Bush, we actually finally made a pretty good run in pinch, which was surprising to us the whole time. We were actually pretty surprised we kept on winning. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we ended up finishing third, I, I think, in pinch. So we had, a, we had a pretty good run in pinch. What did you guys do last? Um, let me see if I can go back. Right, so you got knocked out. Uh, kind of towards the middle. What did you guys do differently um, 
this go around? I mean, you said somehow you started doing better, but do you recall like what might've changed at all or? You know, I think one of the big differences um, was that we really focused on ball control. And my whole point of bringing that up was that I just didn't want our middle players to get teed off on basically, you know, with four or five balls being thrown at them. Thanks. So I kind of just said, Hey guys, let's, let's at least keep two balls on our side so we can kind of protect our middle players. So, no one's going to get hurt or just, you know, lit up all day because that's not very fun for them. Um, but I think that actually just helped us. So, you know, we would always hold on to those two balls at least. And then we were able to protect our middle. And then I think that just naturally led us into just being a little bit more strategic in the pinch division than we typically are. Um, yeah, because it's not too uncommon for us to just pretty much throw all of our balls away and pinch and just kind of run up there and just let them fly. Is it just like the nature of pinch? Like, Hey, I can just throw as hard as humanly possible. just go guns blazing. Or is it just like a, I don't say like a, like a discipline thing, but what do you think causes that? Well, I think, I think your first point is a big part of it where, you know, you can just go up there and throw as hard as you can. And there's less of a risk of getting caught. Um, so I, I think that is part of it where, you know, everyone's just feeling like, you know, they can throw really hard and, you know, there's, you know, you're probably not going to get caught or so I think there's just a lot more throwing. And I think too, we just, we spend so, so much time being, you know, really strategic and, you know, focused and open that, you know, once that's over, it's kind of just a relief. We can kind of relax and just try to have some fun and mess around a little bit. Right. So I think we'll kind of just get into that mode and pinch where, we're just fooling around and messing around pretty much. Gotcha. Were there any uh, teams or players that stood out from, from your perspective? Um, yeah, I think I'm not sure if this was in pinch or open. I thought it was in pinch, but I remember Jake Peterson uh, playing extremely well. And I don't know if Kim or Tony, if you guys saw him at all, but there was a few matches where a few games where he was the last one in and was able to, to come back and I, I just thought he played really well. And I, I thought that was in the pinch division, but I, I could be wrong. Um, but wanted to give a shout out to, to Jake from blitz. I, I thought he played really well. Can you, uh, can you verify that by any chance, Tony, or can you recall? I, I didn't get to see them in pinch really. I know he's always, always good and open playing that corner for blitz. Um, I was happy to see them to see them play pinch again. They don't always play it, so I was just happy that they they stuck around and, and played it. And if they had some standout players, that's even better. Gotcha. Um, so speaking of teams they don't normally see or, or I guess um, playing better. So I'm reading right here. It just says corruption. Um, the runner-up in the Elite Pinch National Championship finally looked a lot stronger this round after two-thirds of a season of being surprisingly MIA and Pinch. Um, can you kind of comment to that at all, Tony? Like, are you familiar with Corruption at all? Or Yeah, um, I, I love playing those guys. It seems like <clears throat> they give us fits a lot. Like I don't know. We're, we're, we seem evenly matched, but it's like when we beat them, it's not close. When they beat us, it's not close. Um, so it's always funny how that, that works out. But um, they uh, they just never looked in sync this season, um, and they had a couple guys come and just play pinch for them at round three, and they were kind of like pinch specialists, and uh, and they looked really good, um, really disciplined. Um, there was one kid I have no idea. I don't. I've never seen him before. Uh, I mean, I never. Other than maybe like Wes Peters at Nationals a couple years ago, I never seen somebody hit so many ankles. It was hmm. incredible. Uh, a blonde kid and I'm blanking on his name right now, but he played for them really, really good. Gotcha. I'm trying to see like, so it doesn't look like they went too far in the bracket, but I guess they must've done really well during round Robin. I wonder if that's what the Tribunes. Um, I believe they were three seed. Three seed. Okay. Gotcha. Um, what any players that you notice aside from, um, uh, that one person we can't recall. <laughs> um, on corruption, not in particular. Um, I, I want to give a shout out to Legacy. Um, they kind of 
they threw a wrench in our plans by knocking us down in the loser's bracket right out of the gate, you know, as a 13 versus four upset. Um, Adam Pfeiffer and Tom Moran had really good, uh, really good games against us. Um, they made some opportune catches and I'm pretty sure Adam got a lot of throwing kills on us. So those two players are, uh, along with their captain Colby, give them a pretty good, uh, pretty good core. And I mean, I think that's why they started playing elite, uh, was for pinch in the North. So they, they really get amped up for that. I think they were excited with their, with their finish. Um, they're just trying to improve every round and, and they certainly did here. Gotcha. And, uh, so you said you kind of didn't want to cover pinch, but, uh, <laughs> do you want to kind of talk about like how, how your team fared and, and, uh, like what it was for you overall? Yeah, it was just, you know, it was a disappointing overall pinch performance. I just, you know, somehow we got the four seed. I'm still not a hundred percent sure how we did that. Cause it just never felt like we were in sync in round Robin or bracket play. And obviously our bracket performance showed that, um, we just ran into two teams who were, uh, who played better than us. They just straight up beat us. Uh, final justice. We had opportunities to beat them in that loser bracket. Um, and, they were they were the ultimate momentum team against us. It was like we'd be kind of in control for a second, and the minute we gave them a little bit of momentum, they just like ran with it, and we blinked and and they won. And it was like, well, what what just happened? We were in control, and uh, and their young gun Peyton uh, Schuster. Um, anybody who knows NCDA dodgeball and, and happens to listen in will know his name already. Uh, I mean, he's, he's a good player, and he impressed me with his catching. Um, in the first two rounds, I hadn't noticed him catching that much, but I think he made like three or four catches against us in that bracket, um, you know, when we had them down players, and that's that's kind of what I mean about that momentum. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I've definitely been there. Like, you know, one minute you, you have the upper hand, it feels like you're going to win, and then all of a sudden somehow you look behind you and four of your guys are gone. You're like, wait, I thought we are gonna we're going to take this, and then you're out faster than you know it. Um was it just kind of like a off day for you guys? I mean, no, no I don't want to twist a knife or, or, or rub it in, but like no, kind of expecting more of a show. I think, uh, I think it was like, I mean, in, I think it was just more frustrating because of how well we did early on in the day in round Robin, you know, we beat, we beat the teams that were ahead of us in round Robin and open. We were feeling really good as a team. Um, unfortunately couldn't close in the playoffs, but then, you know, we're like, all right, well, you know, pinch is our strong suit. We're angry about our finish and open. Let's go get it. And we just kind of never, never really got into sync. Um, I, I don't know how to describe it, I guess. It just the, the, the throws weren't going our way. And when we did get uh, get a man advantage in an opportune catch here and there, really just kind of threw us out of whack. Gotcha. Um, well, I mean, it's, it's not fully over. You still got nationals. I'm assuming Kraken's going to go. Oh yeah. Um, and, and the good thing, you know, the, one of the first things that was said in our huddle after, after we got eliminated was there's, there's no momentum from this. We have two months until nationals, like this is behind us. Um, you know, we're still focused on trying to bring home a medal and pinch and, and open for that matter. But I mean, we definitely want to want to get some revenge and pinch. Gotcha. We're going to be hungry. That's for sure. For sure. Yeah. I mean, two, two months of, training practice uh do you guys have like any and this can go to all three of you do you guys have like any other events between now and nationals where you can kind of tune up a little bit be it pinch open uh no sting i think eric's got a pretty big one coming up <laughs> What's well that? we got udc coming up otherwise oh, uh we, I mean, we practice every thursday night um we have an 8.5 practice um that's kind of pretty pretty consistent for us gotcha yeah, in Grand Rapids, we do uh, Monday night open gyms, and that's been uh, pretty good. And that's um, – we get about half of Kraken and half of Dynasty there playing at that one. So the, us two teams practice together quite a bit, and then a handful of um, GV players who have played for various teams. Yeah, just so you got you, no, no shortage of, of good talent to, to play against and, and continue to, to sharpen and hone your skills in preparation for Nationals. Yeah, all these kids, man, they're all so good. <laughs> yeah, especially um talking to the south, the Hashimoto's uh one's like eighteen, I think one's like twelve. 
and they're just phenomenal players. So, so I'm hearing, so it's it'll definitely give you a run for your money. Um, but as Eric said, got to stay young. Um, <laughs> Kim, how about you? Did you, uh, did you notice anything from pinch? Um, I mean, I, I'm assuming you're pretty much mostly with Boosh the entire time. I was, but there was one thing I did notice. Um, Boosh was waiting to go on a court to play, and I happened to look mm-hmm. over a couple courts and saw Task, or I'm sorry, no, it was Rogue playing Dynasty, I believe it was. And Akil Antoine was the only one left for Rogue against like five or six Dynasty guys. And I was just like, oh, that's cool. That, that'll, that'll end soon. So I turned around. I kid you not, I looked back 10 minutes later, and that point was still going on. And Akil was just picking people off one by one slowly. Nice. And, you know, he'd have five balls thrown at him from every Dynasty player. And, you know, he'd do his little matrix maneuver in the air to block one or two of them and somehow, like, put his feet behind him and miraculously miss all the balls. I'm glad you brought that. Like, I was trying to remember what team he played for. I was literally thinking of that. I'm pretty sure we watched the same point. Yeah, it they took forever. Forever. So he's just like a fighter. I mean, all around solid dodgeball player. This uh, a kill person. Yeah, um, he actually plays with me on precision. Oh, nice. um, and yeah, his athleticism is just through the roof. I mean, that boy's vertical jump is so crazy. He'll just jump over the nets at different elite rounds, you know, that separate the courts and nice. clear them with ease. <laughs> I For some reason, I just see him just going straight vertical, like, see ya, just gone. Uh, Pretty much, yeah. Nice. Um, Pretty sure the first time I ever met Bizzle at Detroit Cup, like three, four years ago, he did something like that, like jumped over a wall. <laughs> just because? <laughs> like, I, I can, if, I can jump over the high I would. Too. Yeah, I mean, I I wouldn't lie. I, 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 can, I would do the same thing. I mean, I would just be jumping all day long if I can <laughs> get that kind of air time. Um, I wanted to ask real quick, Final Justice, was, was Kenny Cox playing this round? He was not. He what? was only there for round two. Gotcha. The guy, man, he's he loves him, his pinch. Um, I was just curious if he had shown up for this one. Um, I mean, they had a pretty good replacement in uh, in Bryce uh, Bielan. Um It was his first uh, elite tournament ever, but he played for – Central Michigan and NCDA, so he, you know, he cut his teeth playing pinch, so that's what he came out for, I'm sure. Gotcha. And that definitely helped them. Um, let's see. Did I? Was there another five? Five v one. With uh, Cody Foley, Eric. Yeah, Cody had one against Dynasty, and pinch. Oh man, so the guys in five v ones against Dynasty, both divisions now. Yeah, yeah. Cody had one in pinch, and then I I had the one in open. Do you um, both pretty big spots too. I mean, mine was in the final, and his was in the third place match. Do you uh, do you remember that at all? Like, because I I don't think I, I don't know if that one's floating around. Um, if there's like a a video of that, but do you recall what happened? There is there is video of it. You kind of have to dig through the one of the streams though um it's bookmarked out there somewhere i i saw it bookmarked um i, I sorry yeah go ahead go ahead i was just gonna say dynasty usually posts their games um within probably a month of each round so i'm sure it'll be out there at some point i think i was line refing for it and i uh i didn't get to see all of it but i, I definitely remember it yeah, yeah i remember it came down to him and uh bailey uh Cody and and Kevin going one on one. Who was uh, who was the individual on Dynasty that that was that took you guys out to begin with? Um, I forgot you guys mentioned him earlier. He was like responsible for almost taking all of you guys out and bring brought you to the one one v five in the first place. Colin was he responsible yeah, Colin for? Brian. Did he do it again with with Cody, like making him last, or do you, can you remember? Do you remember that at all, Tony, or how that got set up and how it happened? I honestly don't remember the sequence of plays that got it uh, got it down to Cody. I just remember 
Cody made himself an extremely hard target. Like they, they were having a real hard time putting him away and he just kind of waited and waited and got a kill. Then would got to get a kill, get another kill and just stayed patient and, and, uh, slowed the game down. Man, that's crazy. I would not want to be the only person against dynasty in pinch. No, thanks. Hard pass in that one. Um, in my experience, when that happens, you just try to make one really good highlight reel throw, and then it's worth it. Yeah, just, just go down in a blaze of glory. <laughs> <laughs> that was me at round two. That's funny. I gotta, so I'm assuming there's a, there's a video of that somewhere then? Oh, yeah. I got to see this now. Very cool. Um, I think that's all I had really. Um, just kind of want to go through the, the rounds real quick. Um, Eric, any, anything else in pinch, uh, player, team-wise, plays that, that stood out um, that we might not have covered previously? Uh, just Cody's 1v5. Definitely have to give him a shout-out for that. Um, going against Dynasty like that in pinch especially, that's a pretty big feat. Gotcha. Uh, otherwise, I mean, man, it's such a blur. It really is. The <laughs> the whole round a few plays kind of stick out to me here and there um but otherwise it's such a blur afterwards i gotta start taking notes during these rounds to prepare for this yeah no i feel you man because like so going into round three for me for the west is like man i'm gonna remember everything i'm actually here i'm on the ground i'm gonna record everything mentally and i we'll see how every how the recap turns out because it's it's a it's a blur and that was you know not even a full week ago but um thankfully there's this article to reference um did any of you guys happen to notice uh, Jalen saying he had like one of his best games uh, against Notorious? Yeah, I can speak to that one because um, I was watching that one the whole time. Um, he just, even when they were trying to counter him, when he went up and through, he made nice catches. Uh, he put himself in really good positions. Um, I think in the in the final deciding point that won Dynasty the championship, I think he had three catches and a ki- and the final kill, which was a very very solid like headshot yeah i think that against uh wait multiple catches one of the was that the next shot that they're talking about or yeah uh michael riley is that what they're mentioning you might have to back up on that one yeah okay yeah so yeah, Jalen Gardner had his best games of the day in the final versus notorious as he was throwing heat punctuated by neck shot on michael riley Yikes. Yeah, if you watch, uh, if you happen to be watching the stream for that game, you can hear everybody who's around Glenn who was streaming it. Um, oh, like their reaction, um, which just kind of tells you, like, if you were there in person, like, it was a very solid throw. I, d- I did see that. Um, it, it's, you have, uh, I guess, Michael on the right, and in comes Jalen, and it's just like, yeah, like, I don't even think um, he, he got a chance to, like, put his hands up. He just gets blasted i think i i think i saw that clip yeah i think uh riley kind of got well he got caught alone first of all like he was kind of like in no man's land by himself a little bit right i think he had a a ball in one hand went to grab another one and before he got to really get to like a a defensive position jalen was like on top of him yeah that that looks Uh, brutal i mean it, it sounded bad it looked bad but i mean if you watch the video Everybody reacts. Riley gets tagged, and he stands just like right up and starts the handshake line. Like he wasn't phased by it. So I mean, I would have been laying on the ground for like five <laughs> minutes, crying. Just like, oh, why me? Yeah, he. I mean, he didn't seem rattled. It, it, it just it looks brutal. Um, I was like, wow, that guy got clocked, but he's still standing, so he's not he's not dead, which is good. Um, how about you, Kim? Anything that I might have missed or we might have missed covering that? Um, You'd want to mention regarding pinch? Um, no. All the notes that I took during the pinch division, uh, you guys mentioned. Awesome. So. Very cool. And then is um, not to put you on the spot, but is Jeremy Meadows is he more known for pinching? Um, I think in general, Jeremy is just known for um, eight point five overall. Gotcha. Uh, he's been playing for a very long time now. And he just has a lot of knowledge about the game and one of the quickest releases I think I've ever seen anyone have. Nice. For open and pinch, just throwing all together. 
Yeah. Yeah, Pretty you give cool. that boy a ball, it's going to hit you really hard. Nice. Yeah, well, cool. That sounds good regarding pinch. Um, just kind of noticed uh, Glenn won showdown. Um, I'm not surprised. Are you guys surprised at all? Or No. Not surprised at all. No. Nope. Yeah, he kind of does that every year. Yeah, he's he seems to have a knack for it. Um who did he who did he play against to, to get that? Did you guys notice or catch that? Uh he beat Miles in the semifinals. And then he beat uh Brian Lyford in the finals. Hmm. Now Brian did have a highlight real play in the finals against Glenn. Glenn went up two oh kind of quick and then Brian caught him from like a foot away. It was kind of incredible. He's known for that too. He did that uh, on me when we had our showdown. He did that, that against Trippetti in round robin in a game. Yep. Yeah, that's a that's a skill to be able to catch a, a point blank catch, let alone from Glenn. Very cool. Well, um, I don't say that sounds kind of dry, but I mean, I, I imagine this is. Glenn won again, so like congratulations, but there's not much more to, to go from there. <laughs> um, well, cool. Well, let's just go ahead and, and, and uh, close this off with like any any last minute shout outs that you guys might have, um, starting from you, Eric. And, and this could be like referees, spectators, players, anything you wanted to, to give one final shout out to? Yeah. Well, I definitely wanted to give a shout out to Kim for starting the women's division. Um, that's definitely long overdue and you know someone really needed to step up and and just kind of do it really is is what needed to happen and you know she started coming over uh to the north with jeremy and and she was able to do it she's able to step up and get it started so um definitely excited about that i think that just strengthens our region as a whole having that women's division as part of it yeah for sure thanks eric yeah <laughs> let's keep it going yep hopefully the the first of many and we'll see many more women's teams uh from the north now um how about you kim since you're on the spot um i would actually like to give a shout out to all the women who came out and played um because they were also very helpful and organized and we were just keeping things moving all day long and um special shout out to hope and Brittany who I saw sitting on the bleachers and they looked athletic and in, you know, good athletic clothes. So I basically forced them to play and they had a blast and they did wonderful. I believe they're blitz girlfriends. So special shout out to them. Nice. You conscripted uh, some players. Very cool. And uh, how about you, Tony? Any shout outs? Yeah, I might, I might have a few more, but I'll first echo the, um, the thoughts about the women's division. Um, and I just hope that, I hope that, you know, it, we start to actually build the, the, the women in the North, get them coming out. Uh, it took a lot of women coming from other, other areas to do this, but I can remember, you know, a time where we struggled to get five teams for a men's division in elite. And we, we average 15, 16 now in the North. So it can be done. It can be built. And I hope that it, it does. Um, and then aside from that, you know, Glenn's been kind of, showing me the ropes a little bit this season about running tournaments and stuff. And I've been really excited to have that opportunity. And so just all the people that, that helped at round three helped make it what it was. Um, I, I, we had to move a court around and there were some uh, players from space monkey mafia that came over and helped me rip up a court and tape it down real quick in between games. Nice. Um, I really appreciated that dynasty was there early helping tape courts. Um, just anybody who helped dry a court off tape a court uh, I think Furlong helped me a lot with the attack lines for pinch to get that set up. Like anybody who had a hand in that, I just, you know, definitely want to thank. And then uh, Colin O'Brien, um, you know, him and I have a, have a bit of a history, but we're still really good friends and I can't run a tournament without him. Like he's, you know, he's my, my schedule guy. And, and I mean, what he's been doing with our scheduling in the North for the last couple rounds has really, really been the straw that stirred the drink for our tournaments, so to speak. So I definitely appreciate his work on that. Awesome. I've never heard that expression before. The straw that stirred the drink. That's pretty <laughs> cool. I might borrow that. Um, I, it's not. A, it's not a Tony Stumpo original. I can promise you. <laughs> I'll still. I'll still credit you until 
my dying day. Like, yeah, Tony Snowball came up with that. <laughs> um, well, very cool. And, and you mentioned, uh, see, I guess you kind of alluded, so you might be taking over for the North, at least in terms of like uh, running elite tournaments in the future. Is like, is that kind of like the process or the transition? Yeah, I think so. We're definitely, you know, I, I've been having talks with Mark and Glenn about that and, and just trying to, you know, I've always tried to help out as much as I can. Uh, I enjoy it. And so, you know, I hope we can keep working together going forward. Very cool. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, uh, shout out to you guys for, for hopping on. Um, bummer we couldn't get Rebecca on here, uh, do the reschedule. But thank you so much for stepping up. Kim, thanks for, for hopping on too and uh, giving us some insight on the women's division. Um, I'm really hoping that uh, next year we'll have, you know, full-on division to recap and see how it goes. But, um, yeah, I guess we'll go from there, and I'll see you guys uh, in Nationals. Thanks for having me. You bet. Thank you for having me, too. Awesome. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. So that was a recap of the North Round 3 Region Tournament that took place uh, quite some time ago. Uh, again, sorry for the delay. Definitely... Um, had some life happen but uh, happy to do it all the same and thank you so much to eric stone uh kim wilkie and tony stumpo for for hopping on and, and helping me do so even though it's a couple weeks after the fact definitely did not want to leave any region behind any event behind and happy to uh to cover it as best as i can and so uh, thank you guys again huge congratulations to uh tc bush for winning the uh the open dynasty for winning pinch and riveters for winning the first ever women's division and a special shout out to to Kim for helping getting it started and everyone else that participated to make that happen, um, make it happen. As mentioned earlier, um, I really hope it's the first of, of more to come. And just like it was awesome watching it develop um, over the rounds with the South, hopefully next year we'll, we'll have tons of women's teams and it'll just continue to uh, to feed the uh, wonderful dodgeball machine that we all, all love. We didn't get to cover it during the uh, recap, I just wanted to mention the uh, the MVPs of the of the day, and that was uh, Colin O'Brien from Dynasty, Eric Stone from Boosh, Jalen Gardner from Dynasty, Cody Foley from Boosh, Mark Trapetti from Kraken, and Austin Bridge uh, from Notorious. Austin, so sorry if I butchered your name. And the honorable mentions: uh, Peyton Schuster from Final Justice, Glenn Spacer from Task Force. Congratulations on winning showdown. Um, it's, it's no surprise you, you took it, so sorry if the coverage wasn't that great, but uh, best of luck to you uh, with the final four. And last but not least, on the honorable mentions, uh, Kelvin Coster from Kraken. Guys, uh, thank you so much for listening. Um, as always, please send your feedback. Um, these recaps have been fun to do, but I really want to make sure that we're trying to cover as much of it as we can. So if there's a format you would like to see, questions you'd like to ask, um, my hope is just to improve along the way. So happy to do so with your feedback. Um, that all being said, have a great uh, rest of your week and weekend, depending on whenever this drops, and we'll catch you next time. All right, guys, well, have a good uh, rest of your night, cute cat, and uh, tell, Jeremy, <laughs> tell Jeremy to say hi and accept my Pokemon Go request. I will do that.